Welcome to chapter four of Intro to Psychology. In this video, I'll be discussing substance use and substance abuse. Generally speaking, there are four main categories of uh, drugs or psychoactive substances. Uh, stimulants, depressants, hallucinogens, and antipsychotics. Uh, in this video, I'll just be discussing the three main or most popular types, uh, stimulants, depressants, and hallucinogens. Uh, so stimulants are substances that speed up the body's physiological and mental processes. They increase awareness, they increase attention, they increase your heart rate uh, or, and increase your, your blood pressure. Uh, so these are substances like caffeine, nicotine, cocaine, uh, Adderall, as well as antidepressants. Uh, if you recall from our uh, video in chapter three uh, about the synapse, uh, you will remember that there are neurotransmitters, which are uh, substances that are released uh, from a presynaptic neuron into a synaptic cleft uh, and then bind uh, to receptors on a postsynaptic neuron uh, so that uh, uh, they can, the neuron can fire or perhaps be inhibited. Uh, so in the synaptic cleft, uh, after a neurotransmitter has, been, uh, has, has done its effect and done its job, uh, there is a process of recycling. There is a process of having uh, the neurotransmitter be sent back into the presynaptic uh, neuron so it can be used again. Uh, that process of recycling is called reuptake. Uh, the neurotransmitter is taken back into the pre uh, presyn presynaptic neuron. Uh, it's reuptaken. Uh, and so um, Prozac and Zoloft and many other antidepressants are examples of selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs. Uh, so serotonin is a type of neurotransmitter uh, that is released into the synaptic cleft and binds uh, to uh, a receptors on a postsynaptic neuron. And much, much research has shown that in individuals who suffer from severe depression, uh, they have low levels of serotonin uh, in, uh, of the serotonin neurotransmitter in areas of the brain or at particular synapses. So in theory, uh, by increasing the amount of serotonin uh, in those synapses, uh, perhaps that should help uh, improve uh, people's mood. Uh, so uh, SSRIs, these antidepressants, work by blocking uh, reuptake. Uh, so they are selective uh, in that they only work for a specific neurotransmitter. So selective serotonin, these are uh, drugs that work specifically to block the reuptake uh, of uh, serotonin uh, neurotransmitters so that serotonin can last longer in the synaptic cleft and just kind of gather there and accumulate there in the synaptic cleft uh, so that that neuron uh, can uh, so that the uh, the enhancing effects on mood uh, of that neuron's firing uh, can be extended. The next type of uh, major type of psychoactive uh, substances are depressants. Uh, so they do the opposite of stimulants. They slow down the body's physiological and mental processes. Uh, these are things like alcohol uh, and uh, Ambien and other kinds of uh, sedatives. Um, uh, drugs like alcohol work by uh, acting on uh, GABA channels. So uh, gamma aminobutyric acid, uh, otherwise known as GABA, is a neurotransmitter whose job is to inhibit brain function. So when it's released into the synaptic cleft and attaches to, uh, to receptors on a postsynaptic uh, neuron, um, it inhibits the firing of that neuron. It tells that neuron to stop firing. And it does that uh, by uh, allowing the, uh, the entry of chloride ions into uh, the postsynaptic neuron. So you'll remember the action potential diagram from chapter three uh, and the, the state of hyperpolarization, which is when the inside or the, when the, uh, the cell membrane uh, becomes more negative and becoming more negative uh, prevents the firing uh, or, or uh, dis discourages or decreases the likelihood of uh, firing of new action potentials. Uh, so the entry of uh, chloride ions into the cell uh, decreases uh, the uh, charge of the membrane uh, so that uh, the neuron becomes inhibited. Uh, so alcohol works by doing the same thing as GABA. It takes the place of GABA. Uh, it attaches to these receptors uh, so that um, uh, uh, these neurons can become inhibited. 
The next major type of psychoactive drug is uh, hallucinogens, and these are substances that alter a person's perceptions, uh, creating experiences that are not real or, or distorting uh, their perceptions, uh, distorting your sense of time, uh, enhancing uh, sensory experiences, causing changes in mood. Uh, one of the most uh, popularly used uh, hallucinogens is marijuana. And as you can see from this diagram, uh, marijuana has properties of stimulants as well as properties of depressants. Uh, it is a really interesting uh, drug to study because of how uh, variable uh, its effects can be. Uh, it is used by many individuals uh, to uh, relax them or to uh, relieve pain uh, for individuals with chronic medical conditions. Uh, but long-term use can also result in uh, many different uh, cognitive and physiological problems such as uh, changes in uh, uh, cognitive impairment, difficulties with concentrating, uh, uh, as well as uh, uh, a long-term uh, increase in appetite. Uh, the main active ingredient in uh, marijuana is called uh, tetrahydrocannabinol, uh, otherwise known as THC, uh, which is one of the many compounds in marijuana, but is the one that uh, allows for the psychoactive or the hallucinogenic uh, effects to take place. Uh, so um, substances that do not contain THC but are derived from the cannabis plant uh, do not have those kinds of hallucinogenic uh, properties, such as many edible forms of marijuana, which do not have THC in them. Lastly, substance use disorders. So substance use disorders, according to the DSM-5, are a compulsive pattern of drug use uh, despite negative real world consequences and it involves physical and psychological dependence. So physiological uh, dependence uh, in that uh, 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 not being able to use the drug results in changes in bodily functions as well as uh, physical withdrawal. Uh, and then there's psychological dependence, which is a cognitive or an emotional need uh, for the drug. And we'll be discussing substance use disorders in a little bit more detail in uh, the latter chapters of this course.